Hey everyone, thanks for stopping in. So, uh, as you can see here, I am not Neil Stevens, but this is still a subsim video. I'm actually Admiral Prower, one of the subsim Discord moderators, but also the moderator for the Cold Waters Forum. And I figured tonight I'd take you guys all back in time here to a bit of a classic. To a game that cut my teeth on the submarine simulation genre as well as naval warfare. This game is Electronic Arts 1989 title 688 Attack Sub. Now, my first exposure to this game came in the form of a Maxell branded demo disketch, a big, huge, five and a quarter inch floppy disk. And for those of you kids out there, I might have been born sometime maybe after the eh, about 1996 or so. Five and a quarter inch floppy is actually pretty big, uh, especially compared to the more familiar looking three and a half inch disc. I mean, the five and a quarter was the penultimate floppy disc. It was a lot floppier than the three, three and a half. But uh, yeah, 680 Attack Sub came on a demo disketch printed by Maxel. I think it only let you do like, I don't know, like Torpex 89 or something of that nature. And I played that demo disc to death. And then finally, almost oh, 10, almost maybe 20 years later, I'm in the mid 20s. Well, then at least I was. Now I'm 33, but I actually managed to find a copy of 6A Attack Sub in his box and got it off of eBay. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the manual any longer. I uh, disappeared somewhere. Still have the box, and the box basically was like this little cardboard affair. And it had 680 Attack Sub on, I believe, a three and a half inch disc. I don't believe it came in five and a quarter as well. Had a manual and also had this little 68800 killer patch. So we got it fired up here under DustBox X, and I'm pretty much playing it as I played it back in the day. Uh, we're playing in VGA mode, otherwise known as MCGA mode, uh, with 256 colors, so the best level of graphics. And we're playing with AdLib soundboard, which is pretty much like, you know, sound blaster. <laughs> So, this is where the fun begins. So you'll see you have a multitude of options here. In some cases, you have the 688 platform and an opposing platform of some kind, or sometimes you just have a single platform by itself. So 688 attacks up, I guess, is a little bit of a misnomer. You can play the Los Angeles class, which is also known as the 688 class due to the first hole number of the Los Angeles class, being the USS Los Angeles. But you could also play the Alpha class attack submarine, which was considered to be the Soviet Union's peer to the 688 at the given time. And with the rare exception of Torpex 89, which places you in, if you choose to, in USS Dallas SSN 700, which is also famously known as the Los Angeles class attack submarine that took part in the fictional hunt for October. And we're actually going to start off with Torpex 89 here. I think I'm going to pretty much demo 688. Uh, the 700 pretty much just adds, I believe, an additional escort to sink. And you go up against a computer simulated 688 as a sort of a sink them first competition between the two. You don't get to put your Dallas against the Los Angeles and shoot at them. Uh, the Navy kind of frowns upon your multi-million dollar attack platforms shooting at one another with live ammunition. And you'll notice here, some of these missions have a lightning bolt. This indicates that the mission in question is one that you can actually conduct in two-player play over modem or null modem, 
Oh, in DOSBox's case, I believe there was actually a member of the SubSim radio room I recall kind of fondly by the name of Emmanuel, if I remember right. And Emmanuel was from Italy, and he actually approached me at one time, and we actually tried to workshop, tried to get DOSBox to simulate this type of connection, 4688 attack sub. I believe Emmanuel had gotten it to work in some way, and he might have even been the one to publish that particular method in PC Gaming Wiki, and I do believe he also published his findings in SubSim Radio Room. I'll have to dig them up here, see if I can find them, see if they hold water at some point. But let's go ahead and let's jump into Torpex 89. I think that'll be a good demonstration here. So, of course, you got, like, your sound options in case you use something like the Disney Sound Source or the current. Unbox sound thing. Yeah, play level. We're going to go ahead. We're going to set this to standard. And these are our modem settings. We're not going to mess with these. We don't need to here. So we'll begin the game. So you're in what's called the con now. So we go here. To, well, actually, let's see if I can. Yeah, there is a help screen. So we'll just advance through here. Computer's just going to tab for each thing, so that's damage control. That's helm. Periscope control. Navigation, or plot, I suppose. Fire control. And then sonar. And then, of course, there's exit. Just as it explains here. All right, so first things first, we get our orders from the radio room. There's our captain here, smoking a pipe. And, you know, this looks a little roomy for a 688, but I guess some artistic liberties have to be taken here. So first things first, getting our orders. So this is basically copy protection. So if you consult your manual, you'll notice there's a, what looks like a city name here. It's actually a ship name. The Los Angeles class was basically, their ships were named after cities, if I recall correctly. So we want to look at our manual. We want to look for, it's starting in page 18. You'll see ship names listed on the left. So we're looking for Buffalo, which is on page... So, you'll look for a passage that starts with the phrase here. So, in this case, it's your 688 is assigned to, and then you solve for what this is. So, the word is counter. So, it says your 688, this is actually for the mission Homecoming. It says your 688 is assigned to counter any naval assaults on a convoy destined for France. In the event of an attack, you'll have to quickly perceive what the biggest threats to the convoy are and deal with them first. So counter is the word that goes here. So we just need to send the first three letters, which we use with our radio key here. If we're, Then we hit send code. Now, if this is right, then it'll start listing our orders. And in single-player play, this is pretty much the only reason you're ever going to use the radio room. Welcome to the North Atlantic, Captain. We're going to begin a training exercise off the coast of the southernmost islands in the Pharaoh Island chain. There are three decommissioned four Sherman-class destroyers making their way northwest through the island chain. They have been configured with remote autopilot systems to allow them some simple maneuvering capabilities during the exercise. Radar and sonar on the ships is also controlled remotely. Surface ships and a LAMP-3 helicopter in the area will attempt to identify your boat, at which the exercise will end. 
The underwater sonar surveillance system, otherwise known as SOSIS, will be monitoring the exercise ashore and act as referee. Well, any exercise with three sonar blasts, if one of the ships or the lamps has identified your position, the exercise will also end after 15 minutes. Your mission is to destroy each of the warships within the allotted time, 15 minutes. It may be a tough job. Active torpedoes in the water or too much noise created by high-speed maneuvering may alert your opponents to your location by sonar, and a raised periscope will leave you susceptible by identification by radar. You decide how you approach the warships, but stay low and quiet if you want to stand a chance. The weapons range is clear and the weapons are free. Show those sea skimmers and fly boys what silent and deadly really means. Good luck, Captain. Rear Admiral John Radcliffe III. John Radcliffe actually being the uh, developer here. So, first things first, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get some fish going here. And may as well have a noisemaker and a missile ready. Next thing, we're going into sonar control. We're going to get our toad array deployed. And we're going to be a little sneaky here. We're just going to take a little peek. Just to get a general idea of where folks are at. We got Forrest Sherman about 5.3. All right. Bearing 011. So let's go ahead here. We're going to go ahead and get our engine started here. We're going to start at a third power. It's probably the best place to stay at there. Anything louder than that, you're going to cavitate. And a good submarine skipper knows that cavitation is a bad thing. Cavitation is basically like the water you know, being churned up by your propeller wash. Makes noise. Duke sub drivers hate noise. All right, we got some fish hot. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep the periscope up a little bit here. I know I can risk it for a little bit. But basically, I don't want this more shooting class out here. Target C, that's the farthest one away. So I'm going to just reach out and touch him a bit with a cruise missile. Mr. Harpoon. A drop periscope. I'm going to raise it. Okay, missile is back in action. There goes another missile. Three five zero. Oh yeah, I do want to come left here. All right. Let's get our periscope down. So those two missiles, which I believe are harpoons, should be enough to take out uh, Target C, that uh, Forrest Sherman class there. At least that's how I like to approach things like that. Yep, he's gone. He is gonzo. Now, let me just consult and take a look here at what our... Mark 48 ad cap range is. Guidance wire is 7.5 nautical miles long, so I guess this is nautical miles. Okay, so our ad caps are actually good up to eight nautical or up to ten nautical miles. So technically, if I really wanted to, I could launch now. But bearing in mind what it mentioned earlier, our guidance cable. 
is good for about 7.5 nautical miles. And I lost acquisition. 7.6. Oh, yep, getting that down. That is a biological. There we go. And while we're out of here, we're going to just shimmy on down. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of give available there. Especially for the guidance wire. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to cross the thermal layer soon. Yep. So thermal layers are great. Thermal layers will kind of help you with evasion. So especially if you're going up against, say, like surface target. So there are, this is more, do, more or less domain knowledge that will probably help you more in the likes of like cold waters and stuff like that. But cold water is denser to warm water. Sound waves traveling from warm water into cold water will bend towards the bottom of the ocean, what's called a negative gradient, while sound waves traveling from cold to warm will bend towards the surface as a positive gradient. So temperature of water decreases with depth, but not really gradually. There's basically several thermal layers. So the water is usually warmest near the surface, forming what's called a surface duct, which can be 10 to 100 feet deep, depending on where one's at. And then as you go down, it drops with depth until it reaches another layer, which is called a the thermocline. And then you fall further past that, which is what's called the thermocline. So with how complex things are, you can have sound waves that are trapped between thermal layers, creating what's called a long sh sound channel. And with that... You could basically evade detection. And they could create things called like shadow zones. Basically, if you hide below a thermal layer, you're usually in a good position to evade. And as you saw there, you know, we already got one for Sherman class there. Pretty sure we're going to be due to get another one in a few moments. No cavitation going on. Mm, torpedo's about to go off guidance. So I'm going to bet that for sure. Oh, nope. See, that's exactly why I kind of. You know, hedged my bets there a little bit. Well, simulation ain't over. Oh, right as I say that. From Sync Lamp Fleet to USS Los Angeles, SSN 688. All subs Atlantic, Faro Island range results. Outstanding performance on the range today, Captain. It's reassuring to know that our submarines are in capable hands. Please express my admiration via your crew. See if you can sell seven days of leave to your fine crew. In sunny, majestic San Francisco. Oh, well, it depends. You know, if we're east side, west side, I guess if you're west, west side, you know, going from San Diego to San Francisco. Yeah. Well, no, you'd have to be eastbound. Yeah, because you're in the Faroe Islands. Yeah, I believe. I think the pharaohs are, like, in the North Atlantic. Yeah, it sounds about right. It sounds about right. Eh, yeah, what the heck. Let's go ahead. Let's do the Dallas. Why not? I'm wearing the Dallas hat here. May as well.
this is a competition against the USS Los Angeles. There are now five destroyers out there. Whoever scores the most kills wins. Only the killing blow counts. You have missiles and so does the LA. Now, I don't know if we even have to worry about any lamps choppers, but we'll see. Get that toad ray going. Hmm. Interesting. A whole lot of jack crap, but not happening here. Interesting. Now, if they're still going about the same course as what they were doing earlier, then hello. Let's see. I guess now we have a good opportunity to do sonar analysis. And depending on where things peak here, we might be dealing with sub- Ah, uh, looks like we're probably dealing with a surface ship of some kind. So, all bets are on that being one of the four Shermans. Mmm, that could be a four Sherman as well. Okay. Now this is kind of the point to where we probably want to start playing a little hard fast here. Probably do not want to cut the toad array. Well, actually, I think we can't afford to retreat the toad array because the toad array is a yeah, it's worth a nice little chunk of change here. I'm pretty sure the Navy would not want us to cut that if we can at all avoid it. Yeah, we're already moving around two thirds speed about. Mm, oh, what's that looking like? Almost like 17 knots that I had. I have to see if that's actually realistic for a 688. That seems a bit fast for two-thirds. Well, it's a video game. What are you going to do? All right, a haul in the acid. Oh! Looks like the Los Angeles is having some... I think the Los Angeles got one of them. Oh yeah, we're going to cavitate like a mother now. Unknown submerged contact going about mm, about fourteen knots. Paraphrasing <laughs> a uh, guy named Jonesy, that's gotta be man made. That is probably the Los Angeles. Why well, ain't that some buff kiss? Well, considering I got no...
All right, let's run over somebody's daughter's stereo. All right, let's slow that down now. Let's just check out Periscope depth here. Sweet Jesus, we are speed. Yeah, something tells me we'd be cavitating like a mother if we're still going at about 28 knots, but whatever. A lot of nothing. Cross the terminal there. Oh, that's interesting. We somehow have That's got to be a Los Angeles. Right in front of us. If that's something. Oh, wait, it's a surface contact. Ew. Need range information to launch. I'd soon assume you have range information. How can you not have range information? And how do you lose contact with something like that? Say again. Somehow we scraped the bottom. Barely, and we were somehow destroyed. Yeah, they even go as far as to give you a little postal card saying, hey, you know.
Well, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and show off the alpha. Yeah, let's get. Let's show everybody what it's like over in Kami Land. Actually encountered this as a uh, command modern operations mission. So you know, same thing ha is going on here. The only major difference is that usually by default it'll have like some sort of pseudo acrylic set up here. Also, of course, uh, things like scaling and stuff. You want to just take note of the differences here. Look how uh, they even make a little reference to the uh, Toshiba Konigsberg uh, scandal going on. They think it's oh. You know, it's got a little, you know, communist party of the uh, Soviet Union sticker here. But you can obviously see, yeah, you know, like Toshiba made in Japan. Ah, bless you, John Ratcliffe. You make all the funnies here. Okay, we cross the thermal layer. I'm not are you sure you wish to cut the total rate? Knit. Come with go to Jeff, you know, take it out of my vodka ration. Joke's on him, though. Like Zukov, I enjoy Coca-Cola. Well, let's just go ahead and see if we can get some time compression going here. Oh, somebody's pinging for us. And yet. Lots and lots of buddies here. All right. 
Well, I'm pretty sure right now I do not need to tow the ray. Alright, total array retrieved. Set the reactor to 110%. Oh. That sounds like some rock if I ever knew it. Or as rock. Yep. Ah, yes. That would be the son of a gun that threw sub rock at us. Ayo. Uh huh.
Yikes. Oh, it's just a periscope. Yeah, we're still somehow 88% operational. My guess, this is the part where the 688 or the, uh, where one of those bad boys goes to give us a little hug of death. Yes, look, buddy, I'm the freaking Soviet gingerbread man, and you're not going to stop me from bringing uh, communism or something. Hello there. to be the guy on the Nimitz there. Yeah, something is pissed off at us.
Oh, ow. We're still rolling, though. Okay, yep, periscope's damaged. So I'm not really going to be able to... Oh yeah, the Iowa class. That's going to take some... Uh... Oh crap, 3% operational. And that's likely the ball game, folks. Yeah, we got a whole breach. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure I still smoked a Nimitz class in the process here. Eh, and that's pretty much 680 the tax up, folks. Admiral Prowers, signing off.